stress that is constant or exceeds your capacity to recover from is categorized as distress, which is a more familiar word, and that will eventually wear down your systems. We often think of stress as emotional, like overwhelm, busyness, like the demands of work, relationship issues, but it can also be physical, like over-exercising or poor nutrition or lack of sleep. Um, here's some more tech talk. <laughs> the activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which responds to stress, is often referred to as fight or flight reaction. Um, this ha when this happens, your muscles, like your skeletal muscles, are primed for action, and your awareness is heightened, and not non-essential functions like digestion are down-regulated. Um, this is balanced by the activation of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is cleverly named rest and digest. So basically, it's the opposite, and only one of these can really be on at a time. So when rest and digest is activated, di digestion is on and skeletal muscle tension is down-regulated. Socialization and creativity and prefrontal cortex executive function is back online. Repair and growth occur during this time. So you're recovering from the exercise that you did. Um, this often happens during sleep. So you can see how sleep is kind of intertwined into this situation. Um, so my approach is to help people learn how to alternate between the exertion and the deep relaxation, which trains the nervous system to turn on and off the stress response as needed, instead of staying stuck in that stress. So this is by the habit of slowing down, paying attention and listening to your body, to your mind, kind of slowing down your lifestyle to speed up your progress with your health. So in thinking about this, and it's like a wide scope of like things that impact stress, um, I, th I think of it in a context of deep health. And most clients' health problems and weight problems and whatever other kind of fitness and body image issues that you normally associate with nutrition and fitness, personal coaching and training, most of these problems are not really about the food. They're not about grams of carbs or macros. They're not about whether you're keto or vegan. They're about life, like life challenges. Um, most of the reasons clients are struggling about their ideal body, and they're not at their ideal of the shape, size, weight, like fitness level or health, are about these deep health challenges. It's like about the rest of their life. It's about busyness. It's about the overwhelm. It's about life skills management. So I work with clients in a way that addresses their lives in a meaningful way. Um, deep health doesn't come from a pill or like an operation. It comes from a balanced diet of fresh whole foods. It comes from like sufficient exercise combined with genuine rest, from clean air and clean water. And it comes from real human connection and sincere emotional expression. It comes from like living with purpose and joy and using their life as an expression of these things. So without that health, it becomes difficult to live the rest of your life. So when I coach for deep health, I really consider this multidimensional um, whole person. So we're not talking, it, body fat percentage and like blood work and other different kinds of factors are a really small percentage of what gets changed. Um, it's how people think, they feel, their lives, and when all these domains are in sync instead of just the physical, then sustainable change might happen. It, ter it, it switches from being a quick fix and a short-term solution, the 30, the, you know, the 30 day cleanse or whole 30 or whatever, um, seven day abs or seven minute whatever, it switches from that into a long term sustainable new normal. And a new normal is like the new catchphrase, but I've been using it for a long time. Um, so coaching with me is about how healthy eating and lifestyle practices affect every other area of your well being and vice versa. So this helps people like reach or even go beyond their health goals, their weight goals without feeling deprived 
hungry or miserable and without turning food and fitness into a full-time job because people have a full-time job already and it fits into into their life in a way that's sustainable so i am going to see if i can manage to share my screen i have a few slides did that work for you guys yeah awesome yep. looks good thank you Okay, so this is about um, the Rest and Digest Blueprint, which is my flagship um, program for helping people accomplish and have health change in their life. Um, and these are the six domains of deep health. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it on here while I kind of explain it. So deep health can be described by six pillars or dimensions or domains, which as we talked about, are pretty deeply intertwined and really strongly connected. The physical, um, when we're physically robust and resilient, we're able to act effectively in the world and enjoy, enjoy a high level of physical function. The emotional, um, when our emotions are available to us, then we are able to signal, when we feel our emotions, it's a signal of something we need to attend to. So when we're able to slow down and like listen to that, it helps us focus on what to work on. We feel valued and overall our balance of emotion is positive about what's happening about and what we're doing. The environmental factor is being safe and secure in our surroundings um, with access to healthy resources. This is um, really germane right now. It includes this, domain includes the social determinants of health, including poverty and discrimination, um, lack of accommodation, maybe for disability. If someone is displaced, like maybe they're a refugee, then focus on things of health um, can be like derailed because this one aspect of their total health is really stuck. So it's hard to focus on other things like healthy food. Um, then, okay, so moving on. Mental is being able to think well and clearly, having our minds be wise, agile, and kind, and helping us solve problems creatively, and making thoughtful choices that align with our deeper principles and values. Relational is enjoying strong, healthy, affirming relationships, and having a variety of high-quality social connections, and a sense of belonging. Um, having high performing people around us encourages us to have like high level activities that sustains us. Um, existential, this is a really interesting one and not a lot of people really put thought into this. Um, it's having a sense of purpose and meaning in your life. So we're constantly growing and developing and repairing and recovering and strengthening and flourishing in whatever we're able to do and often this is described as a spiritual or philosophical dimension. It's having a reason or a drive for why we're doing what we're doing. So deep health means basically being comfortable in our own skill, in our own skin and being able to move in a life forward direction. And as you can see, these uh, situations are connected. So the problem, if someone has a problem, it's connected to all the other areas of their life. And then so are the solutions. So if you look at, I have put it like in little gears, when you pull the lever on one domain, the gears are going to start to turn in the other. And if you're stuck in one domain, maybe if you support another domain, like you turn the gear on something else that's working well, it can help get you unstuck. Um, wherever you are and your performance would be able to increase. So some examples of this is that you might be familiar with is how you feel can affect how you eat. Um, having a supportive family and social connections can impact your motivation to be active. Um, like being able to go to the gym and see your friends maybe in a class or take a walk like we did on Saturday with some people like I might not have got out of the house that day if Rocky hadn't suggested coming over and taking a walk around the neighborhood. So they're really intertwined. Um, and people with a clear purpose have self-talk and self-stories that foster healthy actions and choices. So valuing oneself affects how we treat our minds, bodies, and the people around us. 
So coaching is about using those connections between the domains to the client's advantage and inviting them to explore areas for growth, improvement, and learning um, instead of prescribing, like giving meal plans or exercise regimens. Um, so here's the next slide. Let me see if I can make it to you. Yes. Okay. So when I start working with people, I go through a wide variety of assessments and they kind of like, it's um, a little chart, like if they answer yes or no, then it goes in a different direction. So when we start talking about um, deep health, I give them this questionnaire. And you can see that it's on a sliding scale, like from one to 10, yeah. And um, they're able to say, okay, here's where I feel now. And that's like a before snapshot. And then we decide together what areas they might want to work on or what areas they have, they're really strong in. And um, then go through coaching, whatever we decide to do together. And then periodically we go back and reassess and see what has changed and has what we've been doing been effective in moving them toward their goals. Um, another, um, little assessment or exercise that I work with people are different kinds of webs. And it's just like a coloring exercise and it's very intuitive. Um, this life web, as, there, as someone's emotional resources are used up in trying to cope with challenges and situations, such as those overwhelming demands, maybe conflict or lack of support and work or at home, um, their self, uh, their sense of well-being and maybe capacity to, to care for themselves can be impacted. Um, especially when we're talking about this work from home situation from being, you know, shelter in place and COVID, working from home really blurs and might entirely collapse the boundaries between their personal and professional lives. And that can create worry of poor performance in both areas. So these are some of the kinds of, um, in work and hobbies, in relationships, in their health and function, and also like in personal growth. They can assess like, do they feel like they're strong in that or they're really struggling in those areas. Um, the stress web, okay, yeah. So stress web is next. Stress is so far upstream that many people like really don't see the connection with their health issues. Um, they have a high pressure job, maybe they're mentally stuck in everyday drama, like worry, rumination, or frustration. Um, they're, em let's, let me think of a way to say this. Emotions are like embodied. Um, we were talking about the nervous system. So overstimulating the sympathetic nervous system might come from excess news, maybe watching crime dramas, possibly even just like indulging in too much social media, um, a lack of control and helplessness as, and fear, such as what we're dealing with uh, with the COVID situation, can really like be drawn out in the stress web. Um, there's areas for financial. Uh, this a little bit reflects the domains when it's talking about like the psycho-spiritual, um, that would be the existential domain. Um, the cultural, the little pink wedge is feeling like out of place. So that might be the people that are marginalized populations in our society. They might have like uh, more struggles in that area. So this, oh, and environmental is really interesting. Um, light dark cycles, um, exposure to noise, um, and different kinds of things in the environment, like that people might not think, oh, I have a crazy hectic office. How is that related to not being able to lose weight, right? So this kind of pulls the thread on some of those issues. Um, Obviously, we kind of are familiar with the idea that stress can lead you to eat differently. Like maybe you eat out more when you're stressed because you don't have the time or energy to cook. Um, but lots of people don't really realize that stress can also drain your muscles of energy and leave you feeling literally physically tired and achy. And it can, inter it can slow your metabolism and interfere with sleep. Um, stress specifically makes fat loss harder by intensifying hunger and cravings. It slows down your metabolism by 
suppressing thyroid production. Um, and mentally and emotionally, it can make it difficult to keep long-term goals in the front of your mind. Um, let me go one more slide and see if I can, yeah, and this one talks about resilience. Um, so this is kind of the other end of the spectrum. Instead of thinking about what are the problems and issues in your life, like what are some of your strengths that you can strengthen um, and turn the gear in another domain to unstick one of the ones that you're stuck on. So I really wanted to talk about, oh yeah, Kind of down in the in the side corner, it talks about that parasympathetic sympathetic balance, and then it says vagal tone. So what that is talking about is the vagus nerve. In it connects the emotional area of your brain, and it runs down into your internal visceral organs, your lungs, your heart, your um, diaphragm, your intestines, and it connects to your microbiome. The information from your microbiome to your brain as well. So that's where like gut feelings and intuition come from. Um, it's how breathing exercises work. If you can consciously like regulate um, the deepness of your breathing, it changes the rhythm of your heart and moves you from that fight or flight more into the rest and digest. So even though some I think of autonomic as automatic. Um, you can, to a certain extent, physically and consciously move yourself from a stress state into more of a relaxed state if you need to. Um, so that's what that's talking about. Let's see, what else did I have in my notes? Let me stop sharing for just a second. Um, so here's the, I work with people who sit at a computer all day. They're tech professionals, they work in an office, maybe actually sometimes people are accountants or lawyers or for whatever reason, they're like working at a computer station. Um, the problem with sitting at a computer all day. So take a moment for yourself, a little exercise. Uh, take a quick body scan, check your posture. Are you slouched, hunching? Are your shoulders rounded forward? Like how deeply are you breathing? Like how fast or slow is your breathing? Years of sitting in a chair in front of the computer can really take a toll on our range of movement. Um, a slouched posture really compresses the amount of uh, room that's in the lungs. And therefore, since you don't have enough room, you have to have more cycles of breath. You breathe a little bit more shallowly, a little bit faster. That fast rate of breathing is signaled through the vagus nerve to your emotional brain. And that breathing pattern is recognized as a stress pattern. So um, what happens then? So you have a stress pattern. Your brain says, oh my gosh, let's go into fight and flight. It releases cortisol. Cortisol has a domino effect that then it will release blood sugar because your skeletal muscles will need to move. Because there's blood sugar, then your body releases insulin so that sugar can get into the muscles. But what? You're just sitting there. All your big skeletal muscles, you're literally sitting on them. They're not moving. So what happens? All this like soupy insulin and blood sugar is and cortisol and stress hormones are flowing around inside you and nothing happens to them. And this can lead to over time, over the course of a career, lifestyle diseases such as um, metabolic syndrome, which includes cardiovascular disease, abdominal obesity, non-alcoholic fatty liver, and even lead to diabetes, like high blood pressure is in there. So Something as simple as sitting at your desk in a safe, relaxed environment can lead to all these life-threatening diseases. And not that I would ever diagnose, but I consider it my, part of my work in the world to help people realize that they don't have to go down that path, that there are things that, can, that they can do to take control, that they don't have to just 
live with high blood pressure, that if they have type two diabetes, there are things they can do to turn that around, that they won't have to lose their eyesight, that they won't have to have toes amputated, um, that they won't have to struggle with um, like the looming threat of a heart attack. As a little personal story, um, my family has generational heart disease and my brother had his first heart attack at 37 years old. So this is like really personal for me and I'm super passionate about it. So um, I will move on from that. <laughs> um, so until people address those underlying factors that stress is impacting, they're really gonna be fighting an uphill battle with their health and nutrition and fitness goals. Um, so I want to show you a, a quick breathing exercise that someone can do in the moment if they're feeling stressed, if they notice that they're um, having shallow breathing. Um, and it literally is so simple. All you need to do is breathe in any way that has a longer exhale than the inhale. So sometimes that can just be a slow breath. Um, you just inhale for like a normal and then exhale as slowly as possible. The most effective way is to inhale through your nose because this is how the brain notices like if you're running, you're not breathing through your nose, you're panting, right? So you're trying to imitate a relaxed state on purpose. So just take a second and inhale through your nose and then blow out as, and make it last as long as possible. And it's as simple as that. In as little as one breath, I didn't talk about heart rate variability yet, but your heart beat is however many times it beats per minute. But in between each beat, it's just a little bit different of a space in between. If you're stressed, it's going to be very, very even. If you are in a more relaxed state, you're going to be more flowy. And in between each beat, it's a little bit different. You have a little bit more resilience. So even in one breath, the vagus nerve changes the space of the beats in between your heart to make you more resilient. So that, that's the kind of the tech, uh, tech talk behind why that works. Sometimes when you're really stressed though, it's hard to just calm and you need, your mind is racing and you need something to make your mind be focused. That's where box breathing can come in. And that's literally counting in while you breathe in through your nose, count to four on the inhale, kind of hold it at the top for four, exhale for four and hold it at the bottom for four. So we can do that really one time. So inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, and hold for four. You can do that a few rounds or even just once. So um, <clears throat> Then thinking about desk, desk exercises, we're sitting, we're kind of folded in half, our shoulders have got, you know, hunched forward, maybe forward head posture and have some tension in your neck. Maybe your back starts to ache. Um, when you get up, your hips are stiff. I'm gonna show you like two things real quick that you can do in your office, even if you're in public without being like the office weirdo exercising. Um, so I'm gonna move my camera down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is a chair lunge. So all you've got to do is turn to the side. So kind of like you're mostly supported, but one leg can come down. And it doesn't have to touch the floor. Like stay supported. You can even hold onto the chair. Um, if you have like an arm, just be a little angled, right? So you're just bringing your legs straight down as straight as possible. And then squeeze your glute. And that is, this squeeze makes the front relax a little bit more. So it creates even more of a stretch. And you could hold that for 30 seconds. Then obviously switch to the other side, do the same thing. Drop it down till you feel the normal stretch, then squeeze and you can feel it stretch even more and hold for 30 seconds. Um, 
Let me see. I have a few little gadgets that maybe you could have in your desk. You don't even need them, but I'm gonna show you both ways. This is called a wall angel, and it helps to open up the chest, strengthen um, the back of your shoulder. So all you gotta do is hold your arms like this, and then up, and then squeeze your elbows down kind of like into your waist. So your shoulders are really back, you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, and just do this motion a few times. If you do have a little band, this is a mini band, so it's like a loop. You can wrap it around your thumbs and do the same thing. So it's a little bit of resistance and it allows you to get a little bit more stretch. Or maybe you just have like a piece of TheraBand or some kind of tubing that's not a loop. Same thing, just grab it and you can do like that. Um, the final exercise that I'd like to show you can help with that forward head posture um, that creates like a lot of tension in the neck. So this is super gorgeous. So like <laughs> you might wanna just do it in private or whatever, but basically just sit up straight and bring your chin straight back. Like you're giving yourself a double chin. This is called a neck retraction. So you're like, you're moving straight back. If you do that, you can do it like a mobility exercise or you can hold it that will be strengthening. Anyways, that strengthens the back of the neck that tends to get like tight back there and all this is like loose in the front, um, it will like realign. Um, so those are some just like three quick things that are able to do in the office. Um, Let's see, I think I have one more slide. Okay, so this is a little bit of how I work with coaching, like the nitty gritty of how it works. My coaching focuses on forming long-term habits that can be used across different diets, goals, and lifestyles. And most importantly, you'll have me as a coach there through every step to guide you, um, to help you prepare for difficult situations um, and make adjustments and, and keep you accountable. So basically we take an outcome goal and break it down into skills and then daily practices to help build those skills. So I spend basically at least two weeks on every skill set so that someone is able to move systematically toward their goal. Um, so an example of this, if someone wanted to lose 20 pounds, then maybe two of the skills that they would need to work on is hunger and appetite awareness or eating um, fresh whole foods consistently. And there's a lot of reasons behind that, but I keep it simple and practical um, when someone's working with it. They don't need to know all the science behind it. That's my job. All they need to know is like what to do. Um, so the behavior goals that they're going to practice is eating slowly, um, maybe eating to 80% full, and that's going to help them build that hunger and appetite awareness. Um, as far as what they can do to eat whole fresh foods consistently is make a focus of eating a protein source at every single meal. Um, maybe for another two weeks, they'll work on adding more vegetables to every single plate. So you can see how this can like build and build and build on each other until it becomes the new normal. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop share real quick. So I wanted to show one last thing is how does it technically work? How do you do personal training um, in a virtual environment at a distance online? So share screen with, Where is it? Is this it? Yes. Okay, great. So when someone signs up, stop. When someone signs up with me, then they are going to start receiving a daily contact and it's gonna have a variety of different things. They're gonna be able to have a little lesson that relates to their habit. Um, they can either read it like a little blog or listen to it like a little podcast. And at the end of each lesson, it has a, um, 
like a question about how they can apply this to their life. Um, so some self-reflection, a little bit of Socratic method there. Um, and then as far as the personal training, each day they're gonna have like their own today page. It's like their dashboard and they go into their workout and it, please come up where I can see it. Yeah, they'll be able to choose what kind of you know, equipment they have, what kind of time they have. I will just go right here into the full workout. It gives a written description of what to do. They get to choose, like within each exercise, there's a number of choices. Once they have filled out like everything that all the choices they wanna make, easy, medium, or hard, like intensity. <clears throat> Once they've done that, then it has a video that shows exactly how to do it and what good form is and what bad, you know, poor form is real quick. So it gives them a quick demonstration. It has, you know, step-by-step -step instructions of how to do it. And then the first few times, maybe they'll need to watch the video, but then maybe they'll just need a quick reminder. What am I supposed to do? Oh, here's, I remember this exercise. So they're able to quickly go in and set up their own um, workout according to what they feel like that day and how recovered they are. And, um, they can take that anywhere, whether they're in their gym environment, whether they're working out at home, whether they're traveling like on the road and have a hotel, if they wanna take it outside. So it's kind of like having a coach in your pocket. Um, there's private messaging with me, and that's kind of like the platform of how I deliver coaching to people. Um, we meet, depending on the client, either in a private or group environment, sometimes weekly, sometimes once per habit, every two weeks. Um, and that's kind of the, the how of how it works. So thank you very, very much for letting me um, share with you, pull the curtain back of how it works. Um, so that's my flagship program. It's called the Rest and Digest Blueprint. Um, if you were thinking about like how to describe it to someone, if you knew someone who was interested in that, I work with people for a minimum of four months, but the program is actually a year long. So it gives them like a complete arc of curriculum and time for those habits to really get set in. Um, and ways that people can support me in my business is by connecting with me on social media. So, of course, I would love to be friends with you on Facebook, but I have a Facebook business page. Um, LinkedIn, if someone's on Instagram, that's a great way to connect with me. Also, I have a free Facebook group. Um, so you could refer someone to just join my group and then they could kind of find out about what I'm about. So I really appreciate you guys um, letting me present today and I hope that wasn't too long. No, no, that's perfect. Great information though. I was uh relating to a lot of it um when you were talking about uh sleep uh lately everything that i hear is about sleep you know so your body can heal and your cells and recovering and so i'm trying to get my seven to eight every day so uh i'm really focusing on that but i can tell a difference and then that deep breathing those i do those exercise those deep breathing and that makes a huge difference whether in your, you're in your car or walking you know whatever just to to get that Does